To start develop a custom HMI panel with RobPod HMI Designer, right-click on Project Explorer, and create a new HMI panel file. Give the file a name, and the HMI panel editor will open. Click on the panel top bar to edit the HMI main properties with the side tool window. Add a title. And add your logo to the panel. You can also change the resolution of the panel to best fit the robot teach pendant you will be using. Colors of all HMI elements can be freely changed and customized. Use the palette toolbar to add new HMI components to the panel. Let's start adding a new tab. Add an icon to the Home tab. Change the title for the second tab and add an icon. In this tutorial we will develop a pick and place application. Let's start designing a gripper control panel. Add an image component to the panel. Choose the image to display from your local file system. Then adjust component its size and placement accordingly to your need. Now let's add a button component. We will use this button to open the gripper fingers. So change the button label, change the text formatting, and add an icon. Edit size and placement as you prefer. To keep the same formatting for the close button, we will use the copy and paste function to duplicate the button. Then just change label and icon. To place the components in a nice way, we can enable the auto alignment function. Then move the elements to have them automatically adjusted. At this point we need to link those buttons to script functions that will be executed when user click on them. Create a new robot script and give it a name. In this script we need to code two functions, one for opening the gripper and the other for closing it. We are using here script code but common polyscope commands could be used as well. We will be using RoboDQ gripper for this demo, but you can easily adapt this code for your own gripper. Once the functions are ready, let's go back to the HMI panel. Select the open button and fill the action parameters. Specify the name of the action, this will be useful to display running actions to the user in a meaningful way. Then specify the robot command that will be executed when user click on the button. In our case will be open gripper, the function we have just defined inside the script. Repeat the same procedure for the close button. Don't mind the scope parameter for now, we will get back to it later. We are now ready to launch our HMI panel on the robot teach pendant. If this is the first time running the HMI, you will need to install the HMI plugin on the robot. So connect to the robot and install HMI designer plugin. Wait for the teach pendant to reboot and everything will be set up and ready. To get an idea of how the HMI will look like, you can launch the preview locally. This will display the HMI on your PC, note that this is just a preview panel not a real running HMI application. You can also display the preview on the robot teach pendant. Now very important step. Use the Synchronize button to transfer the HMI panel and the script on the robot controller. Back on Robot Teach Pendant create a new program using the Polyscope. Add at the beginning of the program a script block, then choose the script file we have just developed.
Under the Eurocaps section add an HMI block and select our pick and place panel. You are ready to execute and test the HMI application. Try to operate the gripper using the buttons. Now let's go back to RobPod Studio and design the rest of the pick and place panel. On the Home tab add a label. We use labels to display fixed text information. Adjust text, size, position and colors as you like. Add two image components to the panel, and choose the image to display from your file system. Then add two input pose components. We will use these input pose buttons to let user choose custom pick and place positions at runtime. Finally we will add a common button that we will use to let user start the pick and place task. Now we must link those components to robot variables and functions. We will link the pick pose button to a variable with name pick underscore pose. Choose tool pose type for this variable. In this case we will define the pick pose variable as an installation variable. In this way the variable value will be persistent and remember always the last position chosen by the user. Repeat the same linking procedure for the place pose component. On the robot script let's add some code to perform the pick and place operation. Add a pick function. Add a place function and a start task function to put everything together. Now in the action properties of the start task button link the button with the function we have just defined. The scope parameter is used to determine how the action will be executed by the robot. Main option is used to execute the command in the main thread while background is used to execute the command inside a new thread. Multiple background actions can be executed simultaneously, while main actions can be executed just one at time. We will set up the start task as a main action, and choose background for gripper actions. Ok, now let's add some other UI component inside our HMI designer. We will create a parameters section that users will use to set up the task. In particular add an input component that will be used to choose the number of total repetitions that the pick and place task will be executed. Link the input component with repetitions variable with type integer. Then add definition for the repetitions variable inside the robot script. Now we would like to let users choose if they want to repeat the tax a fixed number of time, 
until repetition's value is reached, or if they want to loop the task infinite times. Add a checkbox component to the panel. Link it with loop forever variable with type boolean. Then inside robot script, add definition for the loop forever variable. Perfect, now we need to add some lines of code to the script to manage this loop and repetition logic. We use the counter variable to track and increment the current task repetition. Okay, we would like also to let user change the task execution velocity, so they can run it slower or faster. Add a slider component to the panel. Link the slider with velocity variable with type integer. Add the variable definition to the script, and then add the logic to manage the velocity inside motion commands. Finally let's add to the panel a section to display and monitor some runtime values. Add a monitor component to the panel. Link the monitor with status variable with type string. Define the status variable inside the robot script, and add the logic to set the different status values. Final step, add an other monitor component to display the current counter value. Our HMI panel is finished and ready to be tested, but first remember to synchronize HMI file and robot script on robot controller. Alright then, let's go back to robot teach pendant and execute again the polyscope program. Try now the complete HMI panel. Use the input pose buttons to teach the pick and place positions. Use the other input components to change the program parameters and then run the task. Take a look at the monitoring components while their values gets updated during the task execution. Perfect. Everything is working as expected and you have completed the first RobPod HMI Designer tutorial. Now you have all the basic skills to start developing HMI panels for your own robotics applications.